So on our day four notes, we talked about graphing our sine and our cosine curves. And then we talked about the amplitude and what that actually does to the curve. And remember, that makes it go up higher or go down lower. And then we did a vertical shift to it, where we actually took the graph, we moved it up, and we moved it down. So what we're going to work on today is we're going to work on our horizontal stretch. So that means we're going to take the graphs and we're going to stretch them out nice and long, or you're going to shrink them up nice and tight. <coughs> and this is our last transformation we have to do to these kinds of graphs. So it's important to be able to do this because when we go to modeling our real world situations, which is actually going to be our next day of notes, it's uh, going to be about our periodic functions and most of them do not have a period of 2 pi. So far all of the ones we've graphed so far had a period of 2 pi. These ones will not. And we're going to show you what happens when we don't have a period of 2 pi. So on the grid below, I have already graphed for you y equals 3 cosine of x. So that's the one that's there. We're going to see what happens when I change it from y equals 3 cosine of x to 3 cosine of 2x. So in your calculator, let's go to our y equals. So under my y1, I'm going to type in 3 cosine of x. You should, yes. And then my y2, I want to put 3 cosine of 2x. Well, because as you watch the graph, the 3 cosine of x gets drawn first. And then my 3 cosine of 2x. So what happened to our graph here? More loopity loops. It's a technical term. So here you've got your one full cosine curve. Here is where your 2 pi is. My red line, I got one, two cosine curves by the time I would normally get one cosine curve. So if I'm going to graph that here. All right, so since we have to get two full curves by the time we get to 2 pi, that means by the time I get to pi, which is halfway there, I need to go up down to 0, all the way down to negative 3, and then back up to positive 3. And then i got to repeat that. So 0, negative 3, 0, positive 3. We'll get there in just a second. One thing at a time. And then it repeats itself over on the negative end. By the time I get to negative pi, i got to be back up at 3. So how many full cycles or periods of this function fits into 2 pi radians? And that would be 2. We got two complete cosine curves by the time we got to our 2 pi radians. So now we're going to sketch on there 3 cosine of 1 half x. So we're going to go back to our calculator. It's going to go to my y equals. I'm going to leave my 3 cosine of x in there. And I'm going to change it to be 3 cosine 1 half x. Is that your prediction? Yeah. Right. It's like the v-graph. It's like the v-graph? Yeah. Wrong. For now, it wouldn't affect too much, but with other things, it would. So here we go. Here's my blue line. I get one complete curve by the time I get to 2 pi. My red curve, it just goes from the high to the low. So I only get half of my cosine curve in there. So on my graph here, I'm going to start 0 at my high. Pi would be my 0. And then I would get down to my low by the time I got to 2 pi. And you mirror that over on the negatives. Oh, gee. Oh, yeah. 
So how many full cycles or periods of this function now fit into 2 pi? How much of the curve fits from 0 to 2 pi? Half of it. So remember, a full cycle for a cosine curve starts at the high, goes to the low, goes back up to the high. So the fact that it starts high and only goes to the low, it's done half of the curve. So the period, or sometimes also referred to as the wavelength, of a sinusoidal function is an important concept. It is defined as the minimal horizontal shift needed for the function to repeat its fundamental pattern. So remember, for cosine, the fundamental pattern is high, low, back up to high. For your sine, it starts at zero, goes up, goes back down and then returns to zero. That's its fundamental pattern. It's got to complete that entire thing to be one period. So the period for a basic function is 2 pi. For example number one, the period of the function depends on the coefficient b in your equations, which is always in front of your x. This coefficient is known as the frequency. So the frequency tells you how many times that curve is going to happen in one 2 pi period. So then consider the graphs from exercise 1 for below. We're going to state the frequency and what their period was. So looking at our original, 3 cosine of x. The frequency is that number in front of x, which for that one would be a 1. And what was that period for that original one? Hmm? No, that's the amplitude. The period was 2 pi because it took that long for it to complete one entire cosine curve. My graph up above. It starts here at 0 and it goes down and then back up. 2 pi is how long it takes for that to happen. So the period is 2 pi. Mm -hmm. So the next frequency is a 2, but what was that period? Pi, 1 pi. Because by the time we reached pi is when I had one complete cosine curve. And then C, our frequency, as we said, I got it. I got it. One half. our period would be 4 pi. Because we had half of the curve by the time we got to 2 pi, so you would have to go all the way up to 4 pi in order to finish the curve. So what ends up happening is between your frequency and your period, they are inversely related. So what that means is as one value increases, the other value decreases because it's always got to equal the same amount. So if we look back again, as I increase my frequency from 1 to 2, my period had to decrease. But then once my frequency decreased, like if I went from 1 over here to 1 half, my period then had to increase. So as one's going down, the other one has to go up because ultimately they always have to equal that 2 pi. So our equation that we use is your frequency, which is the letter B, times the period, how long it takes to create one function, is always going to equal 2 pi. So your B, which your frequency times period, huh? Because in the basic equation, they use A sine, and then they represent this with the letter B, and then plus C. So B is just the value from within the equation. Mm -hmm. So determine the period for each of the following functions. Express your answers in exact form. So exact form tells us we can't use decimals. We're going to have to have fractions, and pi is most likely going to be part of it. So for this one, my b value is a 4, because that's what is located in front of my x. That's where b always is. We are trying to figure out the period. So we're looking for the letter p. So using that equation above, 
your frequency, which is your B times your period equals 2 pi. Plug in our 4. So 4P equals 2 pi. And then what do we want to do with that 4? Divide it. So our period equals, what is 2 over 4 reduced to? Our period would be pi over 2. Let's put, it, put that in context. You might understand. Pi over 2 radians is how many degrees? 90 degrees. So that means one complete sine curve happens by the time you get to 90 degrees, which is that first little line we usually have there on our graph that we're graphing. So those are tight little graphs for that one. Letter B. What is our frequency? Pi over 3. So I'm going to plug that into my formula, leaving it as pi over 3. So pi over 3 times my period equals 2 pi. So how do I get rid of my fraction pi over 3? Well, you multiply by 3. Multiply by 3 over pi. because it's easier to multiply by 3 over pi. So then what happens with the 2 pi's? They cancel. They cancel. So 2 times 3 gives us a period of 6. What you get a periods that are just numbers like that that don't have the pi symbol in there a lot with your word problems. So that's kind of getting us ready for our word problems we're going to be doing soon. So then C, what is our value of our frequency? Ooh, two-thirds, so two-thirds times the period equals two pi. And how do we get rid of our two-thirds? Times three over two. So then our twos cancel, so our period is three pi. So in example five, we're going to sketch the function 2 sine of 4x on the grid below for one full period to the left and the right of the y-axis. Label your scale on your axes. So first thing we have to figure out is what is the period for this graph? So just like we were doing, your frequency, which is your capital B, times your period equals 2 pi. What is the value of our frequency? Four. So divide by our four. And what do we get for our period? I over two. So that means my y-axis, that still represents zero. As far as I can go on my x would be pi over two. And then to the left would be negative pi over 2. So now these functions, they always follow patterns in 4. So to figure out the rest of our x-axis there, we have to figure out what's referred to as our key points. And again, it follows a pattern of 4. So you take your period and you divide it by 4, and that's how we get our key points. So if I put my 4 over 1, I have a fraction divided by a fraction. How do we do that? Keep change flip. Keep change flip. Pi over 2 times 1 fourth gives us pi over 8. So that means each little tick mark on our graph represents pi over 8. So this would be pi over 8. The next one would be 2 pi over 8. But can I reduce that? Yeah, what does that reduce to? All right, so I'm going to change that to be pi over 4. 
And then this would be 3 pi over 8, which can I reduce that one? No. And then this one would be 4 pi over 8, which reduces to our pi over 2. So we continued on in our cycle. And then here we just got to put the negative ones in there. So our negative pi over 8, our negative pi over 4, and our negative 3 pi over 8. Now what's the amplitude of our graph? 2. So I'm just going to put a little scale up here because it told us to put a scale for both of them. I'm just going to go up by ones and down by ones. So our sine graph starts where? Sine starts at zero. So then we're going to go up to two, back to zero, down to, back to zero. And then the pattern goes in reverse on the other side. So we go down first, back to zero, then up, back to zero. So it does look like all of our other curves that we've been doing, except you've changed the scale on your x-axis. So it doesn't actually go all the way out to 2 pi. It only goes out to pi over 2. So then our last question here. We got the heights of the tides can be described by using the sinusoidal model in the form of y equals a cosine bx plus c. If high tides are separated by 24 hours, which of the following gives the frequency of the curve? So we got to think about this. They tell us that it represents a cosine curve. So cosine, remember, goes high, low, high. That's when it's completed one full curve. If they tell us the high tides are separated by 24 hours, what does that 24 hours represent? A day. Oh, one little thing period. Period. Our period is 24 hours to get from the high to the high, it was 24 hours. So to figure out your frequency, we got to use that little formula we had up above. Frequency, which is B, times your period equals 20, or 2 pi. I'm putting 24 in for the period, because it took 24 hours to go from high tide to high tide. Divide by our 24. And what is our frequency? Pi over 12. Pi over 12. 